Hi, my name is Kara, and in today's video, we are going to talk about food and meals and everything about food. So, when you are asked on your IELTS speaking test, what do you think about food? You will have all the answers after today's lesson. Let's get started. So here, we have different words to describe types of meals. Your examiner may ask you, what do you like to eat? What types of meals do you enjoy eating? Number one, you might be able to tell them, I like to eat ready meals. Ready meals are fast and convenient and anyone can make them. You can usually find them at 7-Eleven or any grocery store, a convenience store, places where you can buy the food, take it home, and all you have to do is heat it up. And then you're done. It's as easy as that. That's the great thing about ready meals. They are very easy and convenient. So perhaps you could tell your examiner, I enjoy ready meals because I am very busy and I always can find a 7-Eleven to heat up my dinner and be good for the night. Then we also have slap up meals. These talk about big meals very big meals that make you feel happy and satisfied. So, maybe your examiner asks you, what do you like to eat after a long day? You could tell them, I enjoy having a slap up meal after a long stressful day because it makes me feel so happy and satisfied and forget about all the work I had to do that day. Next on our list, we have gourmet meals. These are really fancy, nice meals where you sit down and enjoy your time eating. They are usually much more expensive and they are fancy. So, perhaps you could tell your examiner, when I work really hard, I like to treat myself to a gourmet meal of my favorite food at an expensive restaurant because I deserve it, okay? Let's Next on our list, we have home-cooked meals. This phrase is pretty straightforward. They are meals that are cooked at home, right? So when you do all the cooking yourself. Usually, people have home-cooked meals with their families. During the holidays is when I think of having a home-cooked meal. So, maybe your favorite meal of the whole year is when you have a nice home-cooked meal for Thanksgiving with your family. Or you could say, I try to have a home-cooked meal with my family at least once a week so we can take the time to talk to each other while we're eating. Then, next, we have cuisine. Cuisine from different places. We can talk about Italian cuisine, Chinese cuisine, Indian cuisine. There are as many examples as there are countries. This is simply food from a certain place. So food that is from India, food from China, food from Italy, you get the idea. You could tell your examiner, I really enjoy Chinese cuisine and try to get it as much as possible. But sometimes all the restaurants are closed and all I can get is Italian cuisine, which is fine too. Then last on our list, we have poultry. Poultry is simply birds, birds that we eat. You could tell your examiner, I really enjoy eating poultry. I like to eat chicken and turkey and duck. Any animal that is a bird that you like to eat, we call poultry. Next, it's time to focus on vocabulary talking about eating habits. Your examiner might ask you, what are your eating habits like? Or do you have healthy eating habits? These phrases and words will help you talk about the way that you eat. So let's get started. First, we have grab a quick bite to eat or have a quick snack. 
This means that you're eating just a little bit in a very quick amount of time. So you eat a small amount very quickly, very fast. You might say to your examiner, I am a very busy person and eating isn't very important to me. So in the middle of my work day, I will grab a bite to eat before going back to work. Or if I have a second, I will have a quick snack, but then go right back to work. So again, these two phrases you can use to talk about eating just a little bit very fast. Sound good? You might also tell your examiner, I love to eat like a horse. Now a horse is a big animal, right? Therefore, to eat like a horse is to eat a lot. You love to eat food in a big amount. So maybe you could say, I try to eat a little bit at a time, but sometimes I can't help but to eat like a horse and then take a long nap. <laughs> Sound good? Okay, number three on our list, we have work up an appetite. This means that you work until you are very hungry. So, if you like to work a lot and you may not have time to grab a bite to eat, you could maybe tell your examiner, I work so hard and forget to eat and then at the end of the day I realize I really work up an appetite. I forgot to eat so now I am very hungry. So if you forget to eat or are working so hard you become hungry, you can tell your examiner, I work up an appetite most of the time. Next, we have eat a balanced diet. So balanced is not too much of any one thing. And diet talks about what you eat. This usually means that you eat healthy. You could tell your examiner, I try not to eat too much junk food, bad food, or fast food too frequently. I try to eat a balanced diet so I am healthy and strong. Sound good? We also have the phrase wine and dine. So wine talking about wine that you drink and dine talking about sitting down to eat. Wine and dine usually means you are going on a date with someone. So you could say, I usually just grab a bite to eat during the week because I'm busy, but on Friday night, I like to wine and dine with my girlfriend or boyfriend because it's nice to sit down and enjoy our time together. Next up here, we have scarf something down. This phrase is specifically American and it talks about eating quickly. It doesn't need to be just a little bit. You can have a big meal that you scarf down, eat it as fast as you can. So maybe you could say, I was at work all day and I really worked up an appetite. I came home, got a huge pizza, and I scarfed the pizza down. Scarf something down. You eat it so fast. Sound good? The next one on our list is very similar to this. Tuck into a meal. It is the same thing as scarfing something down, except it is British. That's the only difference. So a British English speaker might say, I tucked into a meal so quickly that I was done before a minute went by. Whereas an American would say, I scarfed the pizza down so quickly it was gone before I blinked. Sound good? Cool. Next, have a sweet tooth. You can tell your examiner, I really have a sweet tooth. So I like to eat sweet food food with a lot of sugar. 
Think of candy. If you really like to eat candy, you might have a sweet tooth. So you could say, well, I try to have a balanced diet, but I really have a sweet tooth. So I love to eat candy when I can. Sound good? Next, we have fussy eater. You could tell your examiner, I try not to be a fussy eater, but that's just who I am. You usually see fussy eaters in children, little kids. Usually, sometimes adults are also fussy eaters. This means that you only like specific food. So maybe if you go to a restaurant, you'll look at the menu and say, I won't eat this, I won't eat this, I won't eat this, I don't like it. You only like certain foods. So it can be very difficult to go out and eat if you are a very fussy eater. But again, this is usually seen in children. So perhaps you could say, I used to be a fussy eater when I was a little kid, but now I'll eat pretty much anything. Sound good? Okay, next let's talk about vegetarian. Vegetarian means that you don't eat meat. No meat. You won't eat cow or pig or chicken or fish, none of that. You can see here, veg looks like vegetables because that's what you prefer to eat. There are a lot of reasons someone might be a vegetarian. And you could perhaps tell your examiner, I am a vegetarian. So I like to look for vegetarian restaurants and I don't like to be around people who eat meat. Okay? Last on our list, we have gluten-free. Gluten is a protein found in wheat and rye and other grains. So usually, if someone is gluten-free, they will look for specific types of bread, noodles, things like that to make sure they don't eat gluten because it makes them sick. So gluten-free means no gluten, and those people need to look out for breads and other grain that might have gluten inside them. Maybe you could tell your examiner, I'll eat anything, but my girlfriend is gluten-free. So we try to look for gluten-free restaurants so we can both enjoy the meal together. Next, let's focus on some words you can use to talk about good taste. Your examiner can ask you, what kind of food do you like to eat? So let's talk about different ways to describe food. First, we have tasty. I think food is tasty. This just means delicious. So good to eat. For example, you could tell your examiner, I really think cooked vegetables are tasty. That just means you think they're delicious. Pretty simple. The opposite of this is tasteless or bland. That means that it doesn't have a lot of flavor and you don't think it's very good. So here, I will put flavor and cross it out. You could say, I usually think cooked vegetables are tasty, but at this one restaurant, I ordered cooked vegetables and they were so bland. They had no flavor at all. They were tasteless and that made me very sad. Some people don't like strong flavors, so maybe they prefer their food to be a little bland and that's okay too. Next, we have flavorful. This means you like to have a lot of flavor in your food. This usually is a good thing, but for some people it is not. So here I will put lots of flavor. This means you prefer food that is very sweet or very salty or very spicy. For example, I like flavorful food because I really, really like my food to be very spicy. Okay, next we have divine. 
Divine simply means God-like. It is like a God. You could tell your examiner, I love to go home and eat my mom's cooking because her cooking is divine. It is so good that it is God-like. A God could eat this food. Sound good? Next, we have here, fit for a king, which is a lot like divine. This means that the food is so good, a king would eat it. So good that a king would eat it. You could tell your examiner, I really enjoy eating Indian cuisine because I think Indian cuisine is fit for a king. It is so good that a king would eat it. Okay? Next, we have rich in flavor. Rich in flavor is just like flavorful. It has a lot of spice or a lot of sugar, a lot of salt. So here I can also put flavorful. For example, perhaps you could say, I really like Chinese food because it is so rich in flavor. Rich means there's a lot of flavor in there. Okay? And then last, we have to my taste. This just means the way you prefer your food. This is how you like your flavor to be in your food. For example, I get my Indian cuisine to my taste. Very, very spicy. Not everyone likes very spicy food, but if you do, then it is to your taste, to my taste. You could also say, I like my coffee with one sugar and two creams, perfectly to my taste, the way I prefer to take coffee. Last for today's lesson, we're going to talk about different types of flavor and texture. So your examiner probably will ask you, what food do you usually like to eat? Based on the foods you usually like to eat, you can use these words to talk about your diet. So let's dive right in with flavor. First on our flavor list, we have sweet. Sweet food has a lot of sugar. So you can talk about, I like to eat sweet food because I have a sweet tooth. Some examples of sweeter foods are candy, as we said before, but also fruit. Apples, bananas, any type of fruit has a lot of sugar, therefore it is very sweet, okay? Next, we have salty. Salty, as you can see, has a lot of salt. When you think of salty foods, it's probably best if you think of french fries. Or you can also think of potato chips. You could tell your examiner, I try not to eat it too much, but I really love salty food. I can't stop myself from eating french fries, okay? Another type of flavor we have is savory. Savory goes hand in hand with flavorful. It is usually very hearty. It fills you up when you eat it. It is also usually cooked food. So when you think of eating a hot meal with lots of flavor in it that leaves you feeling full and satisfied, you are talking about savory food. An example of savory food, hamburgers. Or you can also think of pizza. Heavier foods that are, have so much flavor packed into them. So for example, you could say, I like to eat savory food because it is so satisfying when I'm all done eating. Okay? Our next flavor on our list is 
sour. The best way to describe sour is with your face, like this. Mm, that's how you know a food is sour. The best example of sour food are lemons. You could also think of vinegar. Vinegar is a very sour food. Ooh, here we go, vinegar. Cool. So, some people really don't like sour food and other people do. For example, you could say, I never like to eat sour food. So I never eat lemons or grapefruit or anything remotely sour. Or you could say, I really enjoy the sour taste. So sometimes I add some lemon juice to my water. Okay? Last in our list of flavors, we have spicy. Spicy goes hand in hand with hot. It makes your mouth feel hot when you eat spicy food. Usually, food is made spicy through peppers. Jalapeno peppers, ghost peppers, there are so many different types of peppers you can use to make your food spicy. Spicy, like sour, people usually really like or don't like at all. So you could tell your examiner, I hate spicy food, so I try to avoid cuisines that are known for being spicy. Or you could say, I love spicy food so much that I like to cry when it is so spicy, okay? Now that we've covered our flavors, let's move on to food texture. First, on our texture list, we have creamy. When you think of creamy, think of food that is thick and soft. Thick and soft and smooth. And let's fix thick up here. Here we go, cool. Thick and soft smooth food, a lot like palak paneer from Indian cuisine, or egg tarts, or the best example I can think of is yogurt. Yogurt is very thick, it's very smooth, and it's soft. You don't have to chew it when you eat. So you could tell your examiner, I really like to eat soup, especially if it is creamy, nice and thick, okay? Next, we have crumbly. Crumbly means it is falling apart. So I will write down falling apart. If you bite into a cracker, sometimes the crumbles will fall down onto the floor. So you could say that crackers are crumbly. Another example of crumbly food is pie crust. So, if you're a big fan of pie, you could tell your examiner, I love to eat pie, and I especially love the crumbly pie crust. Sound good? Next on our texture list, we have greasy. Greasy is talking about oil. Oil, the fat floating to the top of your food. You can see it. If you put your napkin on greasy food, and pick up your napkin, you will see the grease on the napkin. Usually, you can get very greasy pizza. If you have a piece of pizza, put your napkin down and lift it up. See the wet grease? That is oil, very greasy food. You could tell your examiner, I try not to eat too much greasy food because I know it's not good for me, even though I love it. Next on our texture list, we have gooey. Gooey is like creamy, but a little more solid. So I will write more solid than creamy. But it's still important to note that it is also thick and soft. So I will also write thick and soft. When you eat it, it's not like soup where it's going to fall on the floor, but you can still pull it apart, a lot like 
cheese. So for my food example, I will write mozzarella sticks. They are a great example of gooey food. Mozzarella sticks, when you pull them apart, you can see the gooey cheese coming out. It's very thick and soft, but more solid than creamy. It's not going to fall on the floor the way yogurt would, okay? Next on our texture list, we have moist. Moist is talking about something that is a little wet. There's a little bit of water inside moist food. Some people really don't like this texture in food, so they try to avoid it. A great example of moist food is tofu. People who aren't used to moist food tend not to like tofu. So you could say, I really don't like the moist texture in my food, so I never like to eat tofu, okay? And then last on our list, we have mushy. Mushy is a lot like gooey and creamy. You can crush it in your hand. It's not a hard food. It is also soft and pulpy. You can feel the little bits of food inside. It isn't all liquid. When you think of mushy food, think like a banana. You couldn't just put a banana in your backpack and go throughout your day because it will get crushed, right? It is a very mushy food, soft and able to be crushed. Another great example of mushy food is mashed potatoes. You could tell your examiner, I love to eat mashed potatoes every Thanksgiving because I love the mushy, soft texture. Sound good? Now, you can take all of these words and phrases and practice for yourself at home. So you do great on the IELTS speaking section. Don't forget to check out bestmytest.com to look at other sample questions and answers. Feel free to comment and subscribe and see you next time.